So let's go ahead and get into my notes that I took on Wendy Williams. Um, I just want to say that I don't think that this documentary should have been done. Um, I think that it seems as if Wendy's family wanted this documentary to be done so that they can show what was happening to Wendy so that they can show that what's going on with her and her uh, guardianship, her conservatorship, whatever the fuck, it's not right. It's not in her best interest. It seems that whoever, um, not whoever, because I know who put her under conservatorship, that woman, the judge, and we're going to talk about that before we get into my notes, but that was put out today. I thought I had saved it about the judge on yeah here it is hold up y'all the judge on wendy's case was previously investigated for granting guardianship appointments to people who needed to her supreme court election campaign so whoever this caucasian lady is this is wendy's guardian she received $5,720 in campaign donations from 20 people involved in guardianships and awarded those same people, uh, what, 62 guardianships? I don't know. It just says people 62. Let me read what it says. Okay, so the petition was filed by Wells Fargo in 2022. Keep 2022 in mind as you read further. Wendy's son, Kevin Hunter Jr., was taking care of her at the time but after wells fargo filed their petition lawyers for the bank painted him out to be a fit guardian and accused him of frivolously spending his mother's money the judge presiding over the case appointed a professional guardian sabrina morrissey and threatened kevin jr with kidnapping charges if he didn't hand his mother over that judge is lisa sokolov we did some digging on this judge and found out that she was previously investigated by ABC 7 New York News after a paper trail revealed she granted guardianship to people who donated to her Supreme Court election campaign. Judge Lisa Sokolov received $5,720 in campaign donations from 2019 to 2022 from 20 guardianship lawyers, law firms, or people who deal in guardianship cases and awarded those same people or law firms 62 appointments in 2022. Now, we're not sure if Wendy's current guardian, Sabrina, donated to the judge's Supreme Court campaign, but this is interesting. Wendy's family argued that she she's way healthier while in her son's care. The family says her health has taken a sharp decline and they haven't been able to reach her since Judge Sokoloff remove Kevin. So here's the thing. The good part about this is them deciding to investigate and find out about this judge. The issue for me comes in why did we have to showcase Wendy in such a state in order for this to happen? These blog sites can get paid for this type of work. Pay them to investigate and post. Y'all pay them to post fucking Zeus Network. Why y'all can't pay them for this type of work instead of us having to watch a documentary? seeing the disintegration of you know a great and it does feel like y'all will show black people like this but you won't show white people like this they would have never done this to barbara walters who also i believe had dementia they let those people you know go through their shit in private but if it's somebody black it's they're gonna find a way to exploit it and use it as public fodder on top of stealing from her I do believe something is amiss here. I do think the the guardian conservatorship is a problem. I feel like if it to me personally, who are y'all trying to save Wendy's money for? Because if little Kevin wanted to spend all of his mama's money, that is in his right as her heir and the person she placed in charge of her estate. That's his right. Who the fuck are the Wells Fargo people that felt like they should be able to control her money so that it can go to this lady, so that it can go to Will, the manager, so that it can go to Sean, the weird ass publicist who I feel like is giving single black female somebody that's obsessed with Wendy and wants to live through Wendy. So she continues to give Wendy delusions. Feed her delusional shit. We're going to get into my notes, y'all. 
they protected Bruce Willis with his dementia more than they did for Wendy. But the thing about that is, I believe that's because his family really was able to like make sure they had everything. Like, first of all, if Kevin was still in the picture, this would have been harder to do because Kevin is an ain't shit ass nigga. This is where we are with it. But also the same theme for this whole this whole episode of my show today, y'all. This is the same theme. I still blame Wendy. I'm going to tell you why I blame Wendy. Because Wendy wanted so badly to be saved by some man that she created a habit of allowing Kevin Hunter to manage things for her. So she got to a point in her life where she doesn't know how to manage them for herself. And now she's getting older and depressed and sad because the person she put all of her trust into has been cheating on her for most of their marriage, has a baby, leaves her on her own, and now she is in a place to fully take care of herself the way she should. So she's drinking. Her dementia is alcohol-induced. So when she's not drinking and whatever else she may be doing, she's fine. But she's doing that because she's in pain. She's also, she reminded me so much of Whitney Houston and she made this comparison herself. But they are a lot alike. I remember when Whitney died and Wendy cried on the air because it was so much like her own life. Y'all want so badly for somebody to come and save you that you won't save yourself. And when people around you say you need therapy, you need to talk to somebody, you don't want to go talk to anybody. You think therapy is for crazy people or in Whitney's situation, oh, I got the Lord. But you needed to be in somebody's therapy seat because to be very clear, Wendy was another one of those people that did not love herself and was taught not to love herself by her own parents. I know they want to make Wendy's family seem like they're so great. But I remember the last Lifetime documentary where she talks about how she was raised to be so self of her body. You know how fucked up you got to be as them old people sat on that damn old doc you know, documentary and, and talked about her weight. It just was a harshness laughing and, and smiling when speaking of Wendy in such a harsh manner, there's an emotional disconnect in that family. Something, something ain't quite right there either. And I noticed that just as I noticed that something ain't right with the people that's working for her. Another reminder of Whitney, because I feel like it was Whitney's family, as well as the people who, you know, financially were making money off of her. You don't have nobody, which is why the belief that somebody is going to come and save you will always fight you in your ass. You've got to save yourself. And I really feel like Wendy wanted so badly because she was this boss woman. She wanted to be able to just let Kevin handle it. Just let Kevin handle it. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. You should have been on top of your affairs. You should have been on top of your money. You should have been on top of your drinking. I get it. Yeah, the, the Denise rubbed me wrong as well. Maybe not the nephew. Denise rubbed me wrong because Denise was responding like a jealous fan. You're not going to tell me about my aunt. Yeah, Sean is weird as fuck. But if you weren't looking at this from a jealous standpoint, maybe you would have got information, picked her brain. Why? No, I don't want to. No, I'm not going to shoot with her because you're not going to act like, you know, my aunt better than me. Girl, what? You need to be trying to find out who this bitch who can't blend her leave out is. Every everybody feels weird to me. The, the energy of the whole thing felt even her sister Wanda. At the end of the documentary, where they get with Wendy's on the phone. The way they, oh, she's she's fine. She She's like the old Wendy. She's like the old Wendy. I don't trust nothing y'all talking about. I don't trust Wanda. I don't trust Denise. I'm sorry, y'all. And I do believe that her son was probably 
not only spending, but may have been transferring some money from Wendy's accounts to his daddy's. I believe there's something in that as well. And I can't even, you know, I'm not going to make it seem like, you know, Lil Kevin don't love his mom because I don't think that's what it is. I don't think that he intended for this to happen, but I do feel like something that tripped that investigation. Why are you having, why, where was a hundred thousand dollars of Wendy's money going? What did you spend that on? Did he say he spent a hundred, he spent a hundred thousand dollars on Uber Eats? Like, come on, y'all. I do believe the son was being used or manipulated by the day, pulling money from Wendy, because that was the only way Wendy could get back at that nigga was to take everything she was given. And remember, he was losing cars. He had moved that woman to a house down the street from Wendy's house. How he was going to continue to be able to pay for it. Yay. Yeah. If a hundred fifty thousand dollar birthday, but yes, it feels like the son I believe was being manipulated by the daddy, and that's where a heap of Wendy's money was going, and that's why Wells Fargo goes and does their investigation. And you just so happen to probably get a judge on the case, you know, who might be paying people, maybe I don't know, or have some type of situation where if a famous person gets put on guardianship, she gets put in control of it. Or a person with a lot of money and there's a network of people that you can call that's going to, you know, get you in contact. Yeah, no, it, it actually seemed like a situation where because you are somebody with money, you are somebody that's famous. If you don't stay on top of your shit, the people around you will take advantage of you. And that's what I feel like happened with Wendy. And I think that she stuck her head in the sand with the divorce. Yes, Wells Fargo is problematic on their own already. Exactly, exactly. So I feel like it's a it's a it's a conundrum. It's it's a whole bunch of fucked up things going on at the same time with how Wendy ends up in this situation. A family of people you can't necessarily trust. You know what I'm saying? And then the people that, that work for you, you can't trust them neither. Will is a fucking jeweler. How you go from being a jeweler to managing Wendy Wood? I think that makes sense. They met in a club? Come on, man. Right. Kevin Sr. and Kevin Jr. showed up to banks together. That's how this started. Kevin Jr. was executive producer on the documentary. Wendy's son is, is just a privileged kid who has no real regard for money. They taught him how to be... Uh, responsible they hadn't taught him how to be responsible with money i think it's that and i think it's him giving money to the daddy i do i still think that it's something going on where he was being told what to do by the daddy i just i just always felt that way but so okay my notes <clears throat> i don't know where it said that they were going to the banks together but i know that i ain't <laughs> and it would be that's something I think that Kevin Senior would instruct his son to do. Did they lose that house yet in Jersey? Down the street from Wendy's old house in Jersey? Or do they still live there? Does the 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 the, the new old lady got all her same expensive bags she had when Wendy was paying for everything? Because I know they had cars repossessed, businesses closed. You know what I'm saying? Like he he lost a lot financially by deciding to leave Wendy and be with this woman, which shows you how stupid he was. Because while you was working for her all of that time, you working for, for Wendy in this business and you're not cementing yourself as someone to make money from your wife. So now you, how you making money to take care of the other ones you're not living off of? Didn't that lady leave him? No, they lost that house. They live in Florida. Okay. <sighs> they went to Florida where Kevin Jr. is. Where the rest of Wendy's family is. Okay. So, y'all, these are my notes. Wendy Williams. Will, the manager who she met at the club, took over after Kevin left. That's not a good sign to me. She keeps talking about wanting to get back on TV. She's got the crazy eyes and the bad wigs. 
Don't like none of that. Um, she's talking to people crazy, telling Sean, the PR manager girl who I said is giving me weird, you know, fan, fanatical, delusional, you know, can't trust creepy vibes. That's the vibes I'm getting from Sean. Okay. She tells Sean that she needs to get lipo. And this is when I noticed that Sean is dead behind the eyes. So understand when somebody has dementia and they say any old mean thing about your mouth to somebody, those people are looking like they're not being affected by what's being said, but they're being affected by what's being said. They just clocking it and putting it in the back of their mind. So when they're alone with you and they might hit you and you don't remember and all of that type of shit. Yeah. I'm saying that her name, when she was talking to black China, we're going to get to that. Alex, her niece, followed in her footsteps in journalism. I told y'all something about the niece rubbed me wrong, too. Wendy tells her that she has no money at Wells Fargo, fell at Wells Fargo and her guardian stole her money, but she has no evidence. And then she says she has billions. And we know she didn't make no billions of dollars. So nobody knows what to believe out of anything that Wendy's saying. You can't trust nothing that Wendy is saying up out of her mouth at any given moment during this whole four-part documentary. Okay? Sean comes in, Alex leaves because she doesn't want to do this with her. She doesn't know Sean. Things are missing. It's very, it's very jarring. Sean tries to talk to her and she says, no, Sean leaves. And Alex says that she thinks she knows my aunt better than me. Nice try. And I told y'all that rubbed me wrong. I don't need your fake using behind in the middle of my relationship with my aunt. Yeah. I understand what she was trying to come across as, but there was something about that that was bothering me. Like, Denise is just bothering me. Whatever. Alex then talks to Wendy, who says Sean is her PR, but that she knows about finance. Now, even though I don't, you can't really trust anything that Wendy is saying, I would be paying attention to what she's saying at moments like this. Because to me, this is telling me that if she knows about finances, that mean that Sean is handling money for you in some respect? What the fuck going on here? How are y'all how are y'all affording things if Wendy isn't in control of her money? Alex says people are taking advantage of her. She's being uh she's uh being paid to be your friend. That was another thing that was working on my nerves about Alex. These people are not Wendy's friends. They work for Wendy. They're being paid to work for her. Why are you trying to complete it and seeming like oh they're friends? And these are not her friends. These are these are obviously not her friends. Wendy doesn't have any real fucking friends. Let's be clear. Wendy tells her to just relax. She understands. Wendy doesn't want to deal with the real of the situation, so Denise leaves it alone. Wendy went to LA without Will or her guardian knowing. Sean just flew her out to LA. To me, it sounded like Sean wanted to go home. Sean didn't want to leave Wendy by herself. Sean also wants to drive Wendy around and lie and act like, you know, she's the publicist assistant to the famous Wendy Williams. And they have this meeting with NBC and, it, you know, she wants to feel important. She wanted to feel important. That's how Sean is. Sean wants to feel important by being connected to Wendy. So she flies her out there. Will is pissed. The Guardian uh, is pissed. Y'all, this was scary to me. Because essentially, Wendy is not in her right mind and she can just be taken somewhere. Her real friend was in California. Regina is her only friend. Okay, I don't know who any of those people are, but okay, fine. Um, she got the one real friend. Cool. Um, but I like to say, I still felt real. I think what Black China was given in the moment was genuine, even if the friendship is a Hollywood friendship. There was something still very genuine about the way Black China was being with her. Almost like I know what it's like to not be all there all the time. And I wish people would have, you know, showed me care when I was flipping out versus treating me like shit. Um, I have it in my notes, but I have it in my notes. But essentially, like the moment with Black China, she takes her wig off. She wants to show, she wants to show everybody how terrible she looks, which is another thing that feels self-deprecating. Wanting to show people her feet. Wanting to show people, you know, that she lost her hair and pulling her wigs off in front of everybody. Um, Sean was using her personal card to pay for stuff. Wendy and Regina said it. Whose personal card? Yeah, she did this part when she asked Wendy if she wanted to go to the Oscars. Yes. 
also have telling Wendy how great she looks when Wendy has that same wig on that's not combed or brushed. When somebody looks crazy and you don't stop them from putting themselves on Front Street, like when they went to her Hollywood Walk of Fame and, you know, her on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and she has her standing on the corner just staring, talking to all of these random people walking up to her, taking pictures and shit. I was like, Sean is not a good publicist. She needs to be fired. Why would you allow for Wendy in the state that she's in to be standing on a fucking corner taking pictures with random people? You don't know what could have happened. It was just very weird to me. Sean says that Wendy called her ignorant, scared, no food. So she took her to L.A. so you couldn't just order her some food. Yeah, I don't trust Sean at all. Will is pissed. Um... They are going to meet with NBC. She wants the show to be in New York City because it's more important. Sean is inflating the delusion, saying she was surprised that uh, surprised that people on the Wendy Williams show were saying that they questioned Wendy sobriety. I was really surprised and shocked that they were saying that. But then you'll sit up there and talk about how this is Wendy just talking to people crazy and shit. So why are you surprised now that her employees are talking about her in a negative way when you yourself said this is how she's always been talking to people crazy? That's what you said yourself. So that y'all could try to pretend like nothing was wrong with her so y'all can keep trying to make money off of her, right? It seemed as if the people who were shooting the documentary recognized that something was wrong. The people working for her, Will and Sean, are hell bent on making it seem like things really wrong and then this is just some sporadic thing that's happening when when we're watching her it's almost as if she's never coherent she's always living in the past never like coherent to what's going on in the moment sean has been working with her for a year even though wendy was like i just met her she says she trusts Sean over Will and she wants a new manager. This is something that I felt like Sean had a, a hand in. They go to lunch. She's drinking. Sean doesn't stop her from drinking. Wendy's son and nephew, those people will stop. Will will stop her from drinking. Sean, she knows when to stop. Ma'am, she has dementia from the drinking. She shouldn't be drinking at all. That shows that you want her to be in a state of mind where she's not clear because you want her to be drinking. You think it's okay. Will calls. He knows she's drinking. So he tells the, the guardian that Wendy's been drinking. Fuck, when, what, what you gonna do? Wendy's asking people if they know who she is so that she can be praised. All very weird behavior. Um, You know, do you know who I am? Did you watch my show? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's like on repeat, y'all. She's like on repeat. Um, They discuss her sleeping in the Louis Vuitton store. That was something that went viral. And people were feeling like she had a problem then. I had been telling y'all ever since I saw her coming out of the building with Ray J with the, the backpack. Anytime somebody is with Ray J and Ray J got a backpack, please know that it's not safe. Okay. I told y'all that back then. If y'all been watching me for a minute, y'all know. As soon as I saw Wendy with Ray J in that fucking backpack, I said, oh, no, this is not good. Y'all saw that uh, Prinky and Ray J said they're getting divorced, girl. I wasn't even going to talk about it because we don't ever believe them when they say they're going to get divorced. They always end up getting right back together. But now Prinky is winning, winning um, her uh tournaments a celebrity uh poker tournament and all of that so now that she has something for herself she might leave that nigga but anyway back to this sean says that it's not a problem she puts her spin on stories and all the stories out there about wendy being healthy yeah you put those stories out there that doesn't mean that that's what's happening and it doesn't mean that people aren't noticing that something isn't right sean has to Wendy's medical team she believes that Wendy is bouncing back for some reason Wendy wants to show people at NBC her feet and she keeps talking about this before the NBC meeting and I'm like Sean every time she says she wants to show people her feet why aren't you perceiving that something's wrong something's wrong hello her son doesn't want her to work 
Wendy doesn't remember what the Oscars are. NBC declines to comment on the meeting. No TV offer has materialized because anybody with sense can tell that Wendy is not well. Will says the Guardian doesn't know who Sean is. Where the fuck did Sean come from then? Because Wendy says that Will brought Sean in. So if the Guardian doesn't know and you don't know, why is she still working for Wendy? What the fuck are y'all talking about? Will goes up to talk to Sean and Wendy is not on camera. And he comes out talking about he feels like they got to the bottom of things. What are y'all talking about? Where did Sean come from? She gets back to New York from L.A. and she's much worse than she was because whatever happened in that meeting was extremely traumatic for Wendy in the state that she's in. They see her sitting on the sofa, nodding off. You know what I'm saying? Bad wig. Black China shows up to check on her. She pulls her wig off and China tells her she's beautiful. China tells her that she's going to come back and forth to see her. Wendy says, my real name is Wendy Hunter and I'm divorced and he still got no money. The things that really matter, the things that she can't let go of, those are the things that she keeps repeating. Shit about Kevin. You know what I'm saying? Shit about wanting to be back on TV. All of that is, is, is the dementia because those are the strongest things that she feels. Hurt about Kevin, mad about her career. But that's why you shouldn't have never put all your eggs in that nigga's basket. Made him no fucking savior that you never needed. She always wanted to see him as some knight in shining armor instead of seeing him for who he really was. And I think that was a lot of her downfall. China hugs her and tells her that everything is going to be okay. And in all honesty, it was the most affection that anybody had shown her the entire time, y'all. The niece didn't show her that affection. Nobody else showed her that affection the way China did. So when I saw the clips online, I was like, man, look at this bullshit. But honestly, I wanted to cry the most when China was there with her. Because it was the most love that I had seen her given by anybody. By anybody. And it's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to watch somebody deteriorate to such a state. I hate the fact that I called out Grey Gardens because that's exactly what it's giving. Y'all go look up Grey Gardens and y'all gonna see that it's exactly the same type of thing. Oh, oh. Kevin, Lil Kevin says that she has alcohol-induced dementia. She was doing better when she was in Miami with her family. Once she got better, the show wanted her to come back and the family didn't. In 2022, the court appointed the guardian and took away Kevin's um, guardianship. And she was in Miami with her family. And so they made her come back. And that was how, you know, they were able to take, seize control of everything like I read to y'all at the beginning. So she visited Miami during this time to be with her family. And they're trying to get her to see that she's not okay. She has dementia and she's, but she's not making sense. She wants everyone to take, you know, she wants everyone, I want everyone to take off their wig. When she was sitting up there talking to her daddy, her 70 something year old daddy, and he's more coherent than she is, that shit broke my heart. She's still trying to drink. So everybody has to stay on top of her because she refuses to stop drinking. Here's the thing. There's a part of Wendy that doesn't want to come. There's a part of Wendy that because of the situation with Kevin, I believe she has tapped out on her life. And I think that's what she did. When that divorce happened, I think instead of healing and moving on with her life in a real way, she just internalized all the pain and disappointment. And now the drinking and locking herself in rooms and drinking herself away, that's her way of dealing with it. She doesn't really want to come back. That man in his 90s, that man looked good. That man looked good to be in his 90s. I thought he was in his 70s, child. They talk about how everything went downhill after the L.A. trip, but I'm like, I don't know what y'all talking about. Shit was already going downhill before the L.A. trip. The documentary stopped filming April 23. She locked herself in her apartment, basically to drink herself to death. And this is when the Guardian had her admitted to a facility for six months. 
And nobody sees her again after that. And they're acting like, you know, she's getting better because she's in this facility. But none of her family has seen her. Nobody has seen Wendy. And that's very scary to me that none of her family, nobody has seen her since she went into this facility and everybody claims she's OK. Will has seen her. Why has Will, her manager, seen her, but her family can't see her? Y'all, something is not OK. And I hope that this situation is rectified before something ends up happening to Wendy. But it's very bothersome to me that the family has not seen her, specifically her son. Will goes back to Wendy's apartment. And this is when I'm realizing that this apartment is nice and all of that. But why the fuck do you have black walls in your apartment? Y'all, that's depressing. That's that's depressing as hell to have black walls in your apartment. But now they're going to sell her apartment in New York City and she's in facility. So I'm wondering who's going to get the money from selling from selling her penthouse apartment. We see Wendy call Wanda during the interview and the way she acts like Wendy is healthy again seems like a lie. And Will says she's sober and getting better. And I just don't believe anything that's being said. I'm going to just keep it a buck with y'all. I don't believe the family. I don't believe Will. It, it's just, it's a lot. Um, Did you see her call her brother Kevin? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. DJ Booth saved her a lot of something is not okay. I think Wendy and Will are smashing. I don't think so. DJ Booth is a real one. I think he's just taking advantage of the space that she's in. Yeah, it's real SVU-ish. Her family not being able to see her doesn't make sense. The course of New York is has a lot to do with it. This is like a, a movie, uh, the movie I care a lot. Yeah, the way they take advantage of them people. Yes. It don't matter how many pictures and colors you put in that apartment. It still look dreary. All those, Wendy liked the black wall. And that's a problem. It was too many black walls, y'all. That place looked dark. And the fact that her life seemed so damn dark. I'm telling y'all, that's a reflection of what was going on inside of her head, that she wanted dark walls. Notice Wendy kept saying she was moving, but we did not see them set up a new place for her. They always intended to put her into a facility. Absolutely. Maybe not in why, because the building congestion makes it even darker. Uh, I think they were smashing, but it stopped after she got worse. Ew. Will said he opened a new bank account for her. He's getting the money. Wow. Wow. The need up to New York to her. Wendy flew to LA and Miami. I think Wendy just doesn't want to see them because they won't let her drink. That's another, that's another thing that Wendy wants to drink, y'all. And I, I really feel like people are not being honest about the fact that Wendy put herself in this situation on some level. Because before it got to this point, she was allowing her life to just, she didn't care. And that's, I think, how we got in this situation. Yeah, she looks at Will like Kevin, her savior. Yeah. If she dies while she has financial custodian, does the bank get to keep her money instead of releasing it to her son? That's what I'm thinking. Child, it reminds me of how um, the government has always been able to steal wealth from black people. Black people will have had properties and wealth and they'll find a way to come in and, and, and steal it and give it to the state. Uh, to the government so that black people don't have, you know, wealth over years throughout their families so that we can stay in a service industry. Even though they had some tough times, I hope her brother is near. Yeah, they talked about how, you know, in the first documentary, her brother was her best friend and it just doesn't seem that way now. Also, uh, that's a reach. Black walls are very elegant. I don't think that's a reach. I don't think it can be a reach. You have black walls in a tight spaced, crowded, hoarded apartment and a woman that is depressed and drinking herself to death. You think it's a reach? Maybe having black walls in a big mansion. But when they looked at that apartment with all of those black walls, it looked depressing to me. It looked like an extension of what is going on inside being shown on the outside, just like the hoarding. It's not a reach. I can't stand when y'all say that I'm reaching because you don't see it the way I see it. We could we could disagree. 
Ain't nobody talking about the black walls at your house. Thank you for the super chat, Marty1003. My dad has alcohol-induced dementia. I can't watch the Wendy doc because it's so triggering. My granny passed and he spiraled. He's still asking for liquor. Who Sad. Yes. Accent color. All of the walls were black. <laughs> like, that shit looked depressing. As a designer, black walls and small spaces can create depression. It's color psychology. Talk to them. Please, somebody talk to them. Because everybody always want to act like I'm fucking reaching and like I'm crazy or something like that for noticing how things connect. I'm so sorry that I noticed how what goes on inside of somebody's mind can be reflected by what you see around them, which is why when people's faces are light and airy and clean, it's usually a better sign of their mental. Dark courting that means your mind is packing all of this shit in and keeping it there child trust me i know i told y'all when i went to ghana we went to the slave castle right we went to the slave castle the area where the governor of the slave castle where the white people would come and stay the dignitaries the priests that would come and stay at the slave castles the walls are all yellow beautiful bright gold yellow all windows with the ocean coming through down below dingy dark white cemented walls where the slaves were kept so yeah that color shit is real but anyway let me read the rest of these Chrissy, thank you for the super chat. Just showing you love. And yes, black walls are super depressing. I use yellow light to keep my mood up. It matters. Thank you so much. How strange that nature does not knock and yet does not intrude. Emily Dickinson. Come on now. Yes, it is triggering to say I'm reaching because it sounds like, you know, it sounds like you're you're dismissing me I, I, as a as a, a Gemini and somebody that's very good at communicating and understanding certain things. Girl, yeah, no, I don't like for people to be dismissive of my opinions. Don't agree, but don't dismiss me, especially when I know I'm spot on. Hey, Dequatia, thank you for the super chat. The fact that he was making fake phone calls to his dead relatives and pretending to live a life that his actual twin brother was living is where the story had gotten real disturbing to me. Yeah, talking about Risa Tisa. Thank you for that. Uh, Miko Spice, thank you for the super chat, my baby. Uh, empathy without discernment will get you fucked up. Shout out to Jasmine Garden. I know that's right. That's my girl. Aneka Jennings, thank you for becoming a member. Breed the anti-socialite. Thank you for the super chat, my love. I read that one from Marty. I read that one from Chrissy. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, and listen, ain't no wrong with an accent wall, y'all. Wendy's whole fucking apartment was black walls. Like that, that just says a lot to me. That apartment wasn't big enough for them black walls. <laughs> okay. My mom is a Gemini and a middle child. She resonates with being missed for, for sure. Yeah, it, 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 it's, yeah. It, it's basically like calling somebody crazy when they write. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, <sighs> it was a lot of dark shit. But the hoarding, y'all, the hoarding is another thing for me that, that you can notice. And once I saw, once they did the pandemic, shoot, you know, started shooting for the pandemic and I saw all that shit in her house. I was like, yeah, it's giving gray gardens. That's not, that's not a good sign, you guys. On point with the, yeah, nah, the, the, the Ghana, the slave dungeons, not castles. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you on that. Anyway, y'all, I'm done. I'm done two hours. I think I, I think I did good. 1600 of y'all in here. Make sure y'all like the video, support the channel, come back for more. Check out my last, now that we're grown for the purple rain y'all okay purple rain it was a good one it was a really good conversation make sure y'all go and check that out if y'all missed it catch the playback and don't forget to catch the Mary to medicine a live i did earlier today i love y'all i appreciate y'all y'all have a good rest of y'all <laughs>